Good afternoon. Thank you for tuning in to our webinar today. Welcome to the very first SecureMail user group meeting um, held in any official capacity. There's lots of different user groups actually scattered around um, for, for regions and different things that people have put together on their own. But um, this, is, this is our first real one. Um, we're going to talk about some, some things about how people are using uh, SecureMail in their clinic and talk to you about that, give you some insight into things that you could and should be doing with SecureMail. My name is Jeff. McKay, um, with me is Mark Ayer, um, as usual, the Director of Customer Operations. <laughs> Hi, Mark. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. So we, um, we're going to dig into some things about templates. Um, Mark's, Mark and I, we've been talking about this for, for about a week, going through um, the numbers that we've, we've looked at from templates that have, created, that have been created by people. Um, let's... Uh, There we go. Okay. Sorry about that. A little lag on um, PowerPoint. But so we're going to talk about the benefits of templates, what clinics are saying about using templates. Um, we're going to talk about the adoption of templates. So, what have we seen since templates in SecureMail were introduced about a year ago? Uh, we'll look at the top templates. Um, what are people sending the most? Um, we'll look at the different categories. So, we've gone through all the templates that the people have sent. There's over 100,000 of them. And, um, and look at you know, how we categorize those different messages, looking at the subject line and, and the body of the message. Obviously, um, not looking at the body of the sent message, but the body stored in there where there's no actual patient information stored. Um, we'll look at uh, templates by profession, templates, some examples of templates. You can see what people are typing uh, once, so they don't have to do it again and again. And uh, Mark's gonna take us through a quick demonstration of creating a template um, and editing those. So, um, Clinics that use templates are saving hours a month. So uh, when we talk to clinics, you know, there's messages they send on a regular basis. Uh, they type them out again and again. It takes anywhere from a minute to three minutes, to five minutes, depending on the message. Um, and that time all gets um, given back to staff um, when all they need to do is select that a message template that's already been, been created. Uh, you know, the other big thing is there's standardization of message. Um, you know, as much as we all type in our day to day, sometimes we make mistakes. Uh, and this way we know that the template has been vetted. We can put it in there, review it, make sure it says everything we want it to say, make sure it says everything correctly. Um, you know, there's, there's, it's all professional. A lot of times these messages are gonna be part of the patient legal record. Uh, so you wanna make sure that it, it's clean and looks good. Um, also, the subject line in a template of message is going to be standardized. So if there's messages you're sending, you want to go back and look at maybe for billing purposes or just audits. Um, you can go look back and look at all the messages of one type you sent simply by searching for the subject line. It makes it really easy. And it also makes it a lot easier to adopt secure mail as you're looking at moving away from what may have been not as privacy compliant practices, such as using email or something else. Um, to, to moving towards a stronger culture of compliance within your clinic. Um, templates make it easier to adopt because it's way easier to select a secure mail template than it is to, to print out a letter and stuff an envelope or um, go in and type out an email message to a patient. So it really does help clinic, clinics get on board with secure mail. So th these are some of the things we've seen coming back from clinics. Once it was launched late 2020, Mark, you, you can, Way in more about the specifics of the date, probably. Um, <laughs> but 17% uh, of all secure mail messages sent are templates now. So of about 100 to 110,000 messages a month, 17,000 of those ish are templates. And of clinics that are using templates, almost a third of the messages they sent are templated messages. So you can see there's a great use case for them, um, even just in a day to day operation of clinics. Uh, and, and when we're talking about or looking into what templates are for, you can see that 50% of them have an attachment of some kind. And we'll look to see, you know, what those attachments might be. Um, you know, things like instructions, questionnaires, requisitions, um, all kinds of stuff shows up and, and we'll get into that. The top 10 templates. Um, this is a mix of specific templates and also some categorization. If we, we look through the list and we filter by number of messages sent. Um, we, these are what we come up with. Some of them, you know, show up more than once as we get to to ten unique 
uh, templates. Um, the first in the first place there is a post-op report. So we'll we'll dig into that topic a little bit later. Uh, but that's simply coming back from a specialist back to the referring clinic to say, hey, uh, we saw your patient and this is what we found. Please see the attached letter. Um, and those kind of messages are getting sent thousands of times. Uh, COVID-19 pre-screening is a really big use case from a volume perspective. Almost 20% of the templated messages sent are COVID-19 pre-screening messages. Um, so uh, that's really just getting rid of phone screening. Um, you know, you know when people come in that they've already been, they've reviewed um, the screening questionnaire that needs to be done to make sure that, that they're clear before they arrive. Uh, we have a clinic, I know, uh, Mark, you work with them closely, uh, but they took their COVID screening time from 10 to 11 hours a week on the phone to about an hour and a half doing it through templates. So almost a 90%, 80-90% reduction in the time spent doing COVID-19 screening. Um, you know, important info regarding lactation appointments, that one made it to the top three. It's a specific message, obviously, for, for one clinic, um, looking at a maternity clinic, um, patient invite to secure mail. Um, you know, if you want to get your patients on board with Secure Mail so you can send them these other templates, you've got to invite them. A lot of clinics have created uh, a standard invite that explains uh, how Secure Mail works with the clinic. Uh, things like we'll respond within this amount of time, and here's the kinds of things you can expect to receive from us, and here's the kind of things that we'll expect to receive from you. Um, appointment confirmation. Uh, that actually comes out to be a pretty big category. Anything about appointment management, um, consent forms fit into there too. Uh, consent forms for lots of different things. Sometimes the consent form is just part of secure mail. Hey, do you consent to use secure mail with us? Other times it's a disclosure letter. Hey, do you consent for us to send this out to somebody else um, in the course of your care? Uh, allergy skin test instructions. Instructions are something that show up a lot. Um, Pre-appointment instructions or you know procedural instructions. Um, lab rec instructions, um, you know, treatment follow-up kind of stuff as well. Um, set up for treatment, so IVF, people coming into an IVF clinic, and there's a lot of volume going in through that. Um, lab recs show up a lot. Um, and, and what's great about that is it's just a simple message, hey, here's the lab rec. Some clinics have categorized different types of lab rec, because obviously the attachment is gonna be unique per, per patient. Um, but, but what we see is there are some instructions in there based on uh, the use case or the type of lab rec that's being sent out. Um, so there'll be some instructions that, you know, like, remember, you need to fast for eight hours before this, before getting this test, um, things like that. And then a new patient welcome, which typically seems to have a questionnaire, so a history questionnaire. Hey, welcome to the clinic. We're happy to have you as a patient. So care is part of our process. And please return this questionnaire before your first appointment. Um, that kind of thing. So that's, that that kind of gives us a really clear picture of what's happening. And now we're going to look at the, the hard data of it. Um, so we get to look at a big table of numbers. <laughs> but you can see here the total templated messages at the bottom, 107,000 over the course of the year, uh, and that's been growing and growing um, in the in the course of the 12 months. Uh, total templates created uh, 718. That's across about 120 clinics that have created those templates. And when we categorize the messages sent, um, you'll see that anything to do with appointment management is, is really kind of filling a lot of that, um, you know, 36, almost 36% of messages or templated messages sent have to do with something about an appointment. So there's reminders in there. Um, when we'll talk about uh, how we break down that category because it's significant. Um, results is a big is a big thing, and if you look actually at these two columns, average sends per template. Uh, so what that means is, in this column, there are 145 templates created that relate to appointments. Um, uh, each one of those templates is sent an average of 450 times, uh, for a total of 38,000 templates. Um, that accounts for 35 percent of all of all template sends and 20% of all templates. So what's interesting here is we can see that the average number of templates, which I haven't included, per per category is about 150. So we think there's, there's usually about 150 templates uh, per category. On average, um, you can see there's a difference here. These ones are all above average. So this means that this appointments, results, invites, and requisition 
tend to be used by a lot more different clinics than the ones that are below average. So you can see there's a real um, draw to this type of, of template use. Um, and then if we look at percent of total sends, we can compare percent of total templates to percent of total sends. So if there's more sends, uh, a higher percentage of sends than there is percentage of total templates, we know that those templates are getting uh, quite quite a lot more use than, than some of the other ones that might be like these ones, educational um, or referral that have a bigger gap between the percentage of templates that they make up versus the percentage of sends they make up, if that makes sense. And, I, and I'll point out, because I, I neglected to earlier, if you do have any questions about this, we will address them at the end. There is a question box in um, your GoToWebinar control panel on your screen. Feel free to type in anything there, and we'll, we, will get, uh, we will get to your questions at the end. Um, now, if you can go back to that, that, that graph or chart table that you just showed us, just to be clear, I mean, this is sort of aggregate data from across the entire BrightSquid network. But um, in general, and I don't know if you know the answer to this, how many templates would an average clinic have? Do, do they have four or five? Do they have dozens, hundreds? That's a good question. Um, the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, it's very, it is, it is very, it's quite variable. I mean, there's clinics that have created one or two or three templates. Um, mm -hmm. There's clinics that have created 40. Um, you know, I think it, it depends and it, it, it does vary and we'll see a bit of this. It varies per clinic type, right? So a medical clinic tends to have more templates than say a dental clinic. And, and we see that um, of these 718 templates that are created, about 450 or 460 of them were created by medical clinics versus about 200 of them were created by dental clinics. So it makes sense because in a medical clinic, there's a, a greater variety of types of interaction, right? You're, typically what we see um, is, is medical clinics interact more with patients and there's obviously a larger variance of the type of communication that's being going with patients based on their condition. Whereas in a dental clinic, um, it's typically a lot more interprofessional messages that go out, um, and and when you're focused on dental care, uh, there's not as many different types of interactions you're going to have with patients um, that would require a template. And at least that's what I think we've seen. And, and I mean, you you talk to clinics every day, Mark. So I mean, what do you think about that? Well, yeah, and then that's why I ask, because one of the things that I've been seeing is is a medical clinic that is typically communicating with patients, they will have three different welcome to our clinic um, templates, um, one for Dr. Jones's patients, one for Dr. Smith's patients, and one for Dr. Evans's patients. So it's really the same template, but when the MOA is sending that message out, it's customized to the particular personality, I guess, of the uh, of the doctor that the patient's going to be seeing. Yeah, that's, and that's a good point. And that's actually, if you look down the signature category right here, um, what we see in there is it is actually a, like an email signature created for different people within the clinic. Uh, so it's actually quite a big use case. I've got 4,500 messages sent for that, 113 templates created in that, cat, or sorry, 40 <laughs> templates um, created in there. Uh, we can see that there's a lot of them um, that people have figured that out, right? That's uh, well, I know that this message has got to come from um, Dr. Reynolds or whoever, and so we just select auto select the, the signature so that's populated. We don't have to retype out the phone number, the address, all that stuff. It's all ready to go there. Um, and you know, just kind of with some of these other ones down at the bottom, educational is really just about hey, here's some information about your condition. Um, and there seems to be a, a lot of that stuff happening too. Uh, and then if we break down appointment reminders, or appointment, appointment templates, uh, appointment management, um, about half of the templates have to do with appointment reminders, um, which is really interesting. I mean, you know, I think it makes sense. Um, having people come in for appointments is important to making sure that they show up is a big job for clinics. Um, a lot of these, Templates have attachments. Um, hey, please fill out this information. Give us your history before you show up. And, it's, and, and that's there's both in-person and phone consult templates. So there's, and we'll, we'll see that in a second when we look at some of the examples. Um, and that also kind of falls in the data collection. 
um, as a bit of a subcategory to reminders, but there's there's different reasons for data collection that aren't just about appointment. Um, you know, some of it's checking in with chronic care patients, um, you know, a nutritional um, survey, hey, fill out your, your diet information for the last week, that kind of thing that goes out. Um, you know, we've got sample subject lines for each one of these appointment reminder in-person consultation. We have appointment reminder phone consultation. And sometimes we'll put in there with doctor so-and-so. Um, intake questions for your phone consultation, the data collection, right? But you can see how it does kind of filter back up into reminders. Um, but, but what we've heard from clinics is that by collecting patient information in advance of appointments, clinics see that they're able to see more patients in a day. And this is about, about 86% of, of clinics agree with this, that by collecting patient information in advance of an appointment, um, we can reduce the length of appointments because we're, we're going to cut out some of that interview process. And, and we can get right to providing care, get right to the answers that the patients need. And at the same time, that helps clinicians be more effective. So roughly the same number, about 84% of clinics have told us that, that they see collecting patient information in advance as helping the effectiveness of the clinicians. Um, so that's why this is such a big, a big portion of message send. Uh, instructions, um, so procedure preparation, sorry. Um, procedure preparation is um, a big thing there. So you're coming in to have your ear syringed or your surgery on um, your teeth um, next week, here's what you need to do. Or for that lab rec you're gonna get filled out, again, remember not to eat that kind of thing. Uh, screening is a big one. So COVID-19 is the predominant use in screening. Um, Mark, have you seen any other screening use cases where people are sending out information to get patients screened for certain conditions or things like that? Yeah, I mean, screening sort of encompasses a lot of different things. And, and as you said, right now, screening for COVID and, and looking for people that are at risk is, is top of mind. But, you know, as, as you as you alluded to, the other things we're screening for is, you know, patients that may be um, predisposed to certain conditions. So th those questions may be, you know, even just as simple as, you know, age, weight, lifestyle, things like that. Yep. And that, yeah, yeah, for sure. So if we break it down by profession, so we'll look at medical, we'll look at dental, and we'll look at other healthcare providers, you can see a bit of a shift. Uh, so appointment in medical is obviously still top of mind. Um, you know, of the 38,000 or um, 36,000 messages sent in this category, 35,000 are medical clinics. Um, and it makes up a large percentage of, of the messages being sent out from a template perspective because it's, hey, just a reminder about your appointment. Here's what you need to know. Here's where our location is. Um, anecdotally, uh, Mark you know, can, can tell us about them. Sometimes because clinics send messages through BrightSquid, um, patients believe that we are the clinic. And so we have had the odd patient show up at our office looking to um, be on time for their appointment. Uh, so it's good to have that sort of information about where to go. Uh, educational, so here's some information about what we discussed. Um, you know, here's some data on your condition, that sort of stuff. Um, requisitions is obviously a big use case. Uh, and, and so we can see where the volume of messages come in, appointments, requisition is a big use case, and invites, getting patients on board so that they can be sent requisition and, and appointment information. The generic category tends to fall in all kinds of different things about what gets talked about at clinics. Um, here's the document you requested. Uh, here's a sick note you wanted. Um, you know, thank you for filling out the COVID-19 screening questionnaire. That stuff sort of adds up to, to about 5,000 messages. Um, so you can kind of get a sense of from a clinic standpoint, from a medical clinic standpoint, where, where these jobs um, are helpful. Uh, and dental is different. So referral, these are all interprofessional. So a lot of it is, um, hey, can you see my patient? But most of it is coming back from clinics and saying, hey, um, we saw your patient and this is what we found, just like I said. Um, and that kind of, that actually falls big time into the results. We've got a little typo there, it's actually 14,000. Um, so which accounts for almost 60% of the messages. So there's a lot of volume coming back from specialist clinics and dentistry to 
to referring clinics as well. And you can see there's a bit of appointment management, but a lot of dental clinics have that set up in other ways. And in other healthcare, so there's about there's about 60 templates created in other healthcare. Um, so this is um, you know nursing units, um, chiropractic clinics, uh, that sort of thing. And I want to get to the demonstration, so we're just going to go through this next bit quickly. Uh, here's some examples, and we will send this out later, so we don't have to read through all of this. Um, but you can see, please find attached uh, post office report for our mutual patient. And, and this is exactly the kind of thing that we see a lot of, right? Good day attaches an x-ray that was taken in our office today for your records. Um, thanks so much. Um, and then the attachment is just drag and dropped in there, and we're good to go. Here's an invite. This is what I was saying earlier. Um, and Mark, I think you see a lot of these. Um, mm -hmm. Secure mail. Here, this is what secure mail is. We'll respond to you within one business day. You can use secure mail to do these things. And so it really kind of sets that expectation up for patients too, so they, they understand what they do. Yeah, and, and setting expectations is 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 very important. It's it's one of the biggest concerns we often have from clinics when they're setting up their secure mail is, you know, how do I prevent my patients from abusing the service, or are my staff going to be overwhelmed with incoming secure mail messages about every little thing? Um, the answer to that is is right here in this template, which is this is the appropriate use of secure mail with our clinic. And this is how you should communicate with us and what you can expect from us. And by using this consistent uh, expectation setting method, it just makes for a smoother uh, experience for everyone, the clinic staff as well as your patients. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, here's another example. As part of our program, I've actually taken, there's clinic names that were put in here, but I've taken them out and the doctor names. Um, as part of your program, please complete the following questionnaire that is attached as a PDF. Uh, and then send it back to us. Um, and then, you know, just another kind of appointment reminder thing. Um, your follow-up phone com consultation has been scheduled on. And then what's interesting about templates, right, is people actually leave these blanks and then they fill them in. So they don't have to type in everything, but they can personalize the message by putting in the details that are specific to that patient. So a lot of people have come and, and done that. Um, and a requisition, right? Here's what we talked about. Uh, here's the lab work that we want you to get done. Um, please be sure to bring it with you. Uh, you should be, you should fast. And there's also a vitamin D requisition. You know, make sure you bring them both. Um, so with that, Mark, I'm, I'm going to turn things over to you for for a bit of a quick demonstration on um, how to create templates. All right. So the screen should be up on everyone's side right now. Um, yep. So Jeff didn't leave you very much time. But luckily, uh, creating a template is really, really simple. It, it's very much like actually composing a message. So um, from your inbox, we'll go to settings. And then in the settings section, we will go to templates. And this is where we can view the templates that we already have. So if you haven't created any templates yet, you will have a, a preset default I don't know, about a half a dozen different templates available to you. To you, uh, Not these ones, but a different set of defaults. And so we can look at any of these templates that already exist, and we can customize them and, and, uh, and personalize them to our particular clinic. So this one here, for example, is the uh, uh, how to manage your diabetes. There's an educational pamphlet attached. So every time that I deploy this message, this template, to a patient, they're going to get all of this information. And these placeholders for recipient name and my name, in this case, the sender name, will be automatically inserted into these uh, into these locations. But let's go ahead and, uh, and make a new template. So I'm just going to go to the Create New Message Template button. And as I said, this looks a lot like composing a message. So we'll give the template a name. We'll call this one, Welcome to our clinic. Uh, this field del does not appear as part of the template, it doesn't get sent to anyone, so this can be, have an internal name. Uh, I'm just going to use the same name for the template for the, uh, for the actual subject line of the message. So the top one is the title, the lower one is the subject line. You know what, I'm just going to name this title here so we see that later. Um, and then we just compose our message. Now, rather than having you watch me type for 15 minutes, I'm just going to very quickly copy and paste something from my Microsoft Word, and we'll paste that in here. And so now I've created my welcome to our clinic template. Let's go ahead and put in that placeholder I talked about earlier. So dear recipient name, welcome to the clinic, et cetera, et cetera. I have a typo to correct. 
that's fine. Off we go, that's all the information, and then we'll put the recipient or the sender's name here. We'll delete this, and that's ready to go. And last but not least, uh, you'll notice that I reference uh, attached to this message below is our pre-appointment form. So I'm going to attach that to the template as well. So we'll browse my computer to find that, that uh, document that I want to attach. And it is here, the clinic medical history form. So now this uh, PDF document will be attached and built into the template. So we'll click save. And that's it. I've created a whole new custom template for my clinic. And now if we go back and compose a new message, I can very, very quickly address a message and uh, welcome someone to our clinic with all of the information that I want them to have. So we'll pick Mr. Adam Abel, my favorite patient. Uh, oh, he's not there. I'll come back to that in a moment. So here's all the templates. Um, here are the ones that we saw earlier. This is the one that I just created called Welcome to Our Clinic. As soon as we select that, all of the information that I put into the template a few minutes ago is now there. And then I just simply address it to my patient and click send. So all of this consistent information about how our clinic works, how secure mail works, what the expectations are, and this medical history form can be sent off to a patient in a matter of two or three mouse clicks, as opposed to some other more uh, complex method. So that's a great way to, uh, to save time for your clinic. Jeff? Uh, I will point out, Mark, too, yeah, just one quick thing is, is if, if you need to update a template, um, you just can, you can go in and resave it uh, in the template section, right? If like, you know, you moved addresses or something. Yeah, that, that's right. Or uh, as I mentioned earlier, when you, when you were presenting, Jeff, um, a clinic may want to have a different welcome letter for Dr. A versus Dr. B. So I can select my welcome to our clinic template and save it under a new name. Welcome, Dr. Smith. And now we can customize this message for patients of Dr. Smith, for example. So now we just have another template. It's practically identical. I could make some custom changes there, depending on what specific things Dr. Smith may want to uh, inform his patients of. And then, so that's the save as versus save. Exactly, yeah. Okay, awesome. Great, see, it's that easy. <laughs> and, uh, and I, you know, I think it's, it's, a great, it's a great demonstration what you showed is actually a lot of clinics used to copy and paste like you did into the template. People did that every time into a message. People were kind of yep. creating templates anyway. Um, and this just made it a whole lot easier because we don't have to go out of a different, into a different system and get that information. Yeah, like a lot of things in Secure Mail, you know, we, we, we looked at what our users were already doing and we found ways to make it a little bit easier. Um, uh, we, 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 we learn from our users, which is the, the title of this user group, I suppose. Yes, and I am going to take back control. Um, <clears throat> we have about a minute left, and there's a couple of. Am I show? I didn't. I didn't switch yet. But um, really, at the end, it's just it, we're just going to ask some questions, answer some questions. Um, if you if you want information about. Um, Templates, you can always, you can log in and create your own templates at health.brightsquid.com. As Mark showed you, you can talk to the support team, support Brightsquid or support.brightsquid.com. Um, one question we have, Mark, is, is can templates be sent to multiple recipients at once? Yeah, that's a great question, actually. I, I probably should have mentioned that. So um, as with any other secure mail message, when you're addressing something and sending it out, you can address it to multiple recipients. Now. This maybe goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway. Um, if you send a message to five patients, all five patients are going to get an identical message. With the one caveat, which is the recipient name field will be filled in with the appropriate recipient's name. But everything else is going to be the same, including attachments, the body of a message, and all that good stuff. So it is a really good way to save a lot more time because now I can just send um, that welcome letter that I sent, I could address that to five, 10, 15 patients at the same time, and it'll automatically fill in the, the dear Bob part of it. That actually leads into the, the next question we have, we'll address it quickly before we go, but um, can I invite patients through templates or anybody? Y yes, you can. 
yeah, a, a template really at the end of the day is like any other secure mail message. So when you send that first message to someone, um, be it something that you hand write or select from a template, um, that would be the first message that they get and that would help them establish their account and then you're off to the races. Awesome. Well, Mark, thank you for, for your time and, and thank you everyone else for tuning in today. Uh, we will send out a recording so you can share this around, um, but certainly, you know, we're really interested in, in what's happening with templates and, um, and and how people are using them. And, and we'll continue to sort of monitor this in, in the next few months. We'll give an update and see what has what changed. Um, Jeff, I, did, I just uh, did, did just see a question come in just as you were wrapping up, and I think it's important we address this one because I should have mentioned it already. Um, if we do that, a uh, use case that I discussed a moment ago, which is sending one template to multiple patients, patients will not know about one another. So uh, similar in function to when you use traditional email and BCC, multiple people, um, no one is aware of the other recipients. And that's standard uh, anytime you're messaging patients through secure mail. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, patients will not see other recipients other than professionals. That's right. Yeah. Awesome. Well. Thank you very much for that. Um, we have one quick question. Uh, I'm going to defer that, Angela. If you can reach out to Mark, um, quick question about how to edit our address book. Um, so that, that's actually oh, yeah. um, an interesting question. Maybe, maybe we could address it real quick. Well, the address book in, in BrightSquid Secure Mail is, is really more of a directory of BrightSquid users. Um, now, what we display in the professional directory is your list of recent contacts. And if you stop contacting someone, they'll eventually fall off the list and no longer be on there. But right now I can't, there's no button to delete someone from the Bright Squid system. Um, but you could contact support and we can help you sort of um, work through that process. Yeah, and then I guess um, you can add people to the system by by inviting them if they don't already have an account. Um, you can you Correct. can go through that process to get them into what what looks like your contact list or or the professional or patient directory as well. Yeah. Thank you very much for tuning in today and uh, have a great weekend. Thanks, Mark. So long.